Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at how to solve linear equations. So we're going to solve linear equations with one variable. Then we're going to solve linear equations with fractions. And then the next video, we'll solve rational equations with variables in the denominator. We'll be able to recognize whether we have an identity, a conditional equation, or an inconsistent equation, and be able to classify an equation as one of those three. And then we'll be able to solve apply problems using linear functions. So in this section, we're going to learn how to solve equations where you have a linear function that is equal to a constant. So you'll have what's called a linear equation. So let's see what a linear equation might look like. If you have a linear function, remember that we've talked about this previously, a linear function can be y equals mx plus b, or if you use function notation, it could be f of x equals mx plus b. Notice that the x, or the variable, is raised to the first power. So in other words, you have x to the first power, the n is what was called the slope, and the b was the y-intercept. Well, in this section, we'll be looking at what's called linear equations, where you have one variable, x, and it'll be written in this form, mx plus b equals zero, or it could be equal to some constant, but what's important is that the m cannot be zero. So in other words, you need to have an x term. If you have zero times x, that's just zero, and the variable term just disappears. So if you have an equation of this form, mx plus b, then it's called a linear equation. And what's so important about this is that you will have exactly one solution, or sometimes people call them a root, or sometimes people might call them zeros of a function. So zeros of a function are the x values, where the y value or the function equals zero. That's where it gets its name, zeros of a function. So sometimes you might hear the word root, solution, or zero of a linear equation. And then the steps on how we're going to solve linear equations is very important to know what the concept of equivalent equations. Two or more linear equations with the same solution are called equivalent. So here's steps that you can use to generate equivalent equations. Now we're going to use these steps on how to solve a linear equation at the same time. So an equation can be transformed into an equivalent equation by one of the following operations. So for an example, we're going to solve this equation by going through each of these steps. So three times x subtract six is equal to six x subtract x. So the first step that you can do to, to create or generate equivalent equations is to simplify an expression by removing any grouping symbols. So parentheses or square brackets and then combining like terms. So let's solve this equation. Notice that x is being raised to the first power in each of the variable terms, so it's called a linear equation. Well, simplify by removing grouping symbols. That means you can use the distributive property. So use the distributive property. And combine like terms. on the same side of the equation. All right, to do that, we have three times x, that would be three, three x, three times negative six is negative 18. And now notice that you have like terms on the right side of the equal sign or the right side of the equation. So you can combine like terms to make it 6x subtract 1x is 5x. So that's the first step. Remove any grouping symbols and combining like terms that are already on the same side of the equation. So let's continue where we left off. We had 3x subtract 18 equals 5x. This step, you are allowed to add or subtract like terms to the same side of the equation. So notice that you have a 3x on one side of the equation, the left side, 
and you have a 5x on the right side, and those are like terms. Well, you're allowed to move the like terms to the same side by adding or subtracting. So to move the 3x, because it's positive 3x, you need to subtract 3x, that gives you 0. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you need to do the same thing to the other side. Subtract 3x on the right side of the equals. So negative 18 is equal to 5x subtract 3x is 2x. So once you have the x term on one side and you have a non-x term on the other side of the equation, now you're, you're ready for step three. Multiply or divide by a non-zero quantity on both sides of the equation. So let's keep going with the same equation. Negative 18 equals 2x. We're going to multiply or divide by the same quantity. on both sides of the equation. Okay, so what this step would be is you wanna isolate just x, just the variable term. So you have two x, you're allowed to divide by two because it's two times x. You wanna undo the multiplication. So divide both sides by two and you get negative nine is equal to x. And so we have solved the equation because we have just x by itself and x is equal to negative 9. However, the very last step that you're allowed to do to generate an equivalent equation is to interchange the left side and the right side of the equation if you feel so. So this last step is negative 9 equals x. If you don't like x on the right side of the equation, you can rewrite it. So this implies that x is equal to negative 9. And so x equals negative 9 is what's called a solution to the equation. And what it means to be a solution is that if x is equal to negative 9, it makes the equation true. It makes it a true statement. So keep in mind, you can always check your answer. If you substitute negative 9 back into the x in the original equation, each x is replaced with negative 9, it will make it true. So notice that we've just solved the equation 3 times x minus 6 in parentheses equals 6x minus x, and we were using one of the four operations that generate equivalent equations. And the idea is you want to be able to solve a linear equation by getting the variable by itself on one side of the equation, or the equal sign, and a number by itself on the other side of the equation. So here are the steps on how to solve a linear equation. It's going to seem very similar to what we just did in the last example. You simplify an algebraic expression on each side by removing any grouping symbols, so parentheses or square brackets if you have any, and then you combine like terms. Once that step's finished, number two is collect all the variable terms on one side and all the numbers or the constant terms on the other side of the equation, away from the variable terms. Once you have that step finished, then you isolate the variable, so multiply or divide, on both sides of the equation to get x by itself. And then the last step, you can always check your answer with the original equation. Okay, so let's use these four steps on example one. We're going to solve the following linear equations. So number one, is solve the equation 4 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 29 plus 3 times the parentheses 2x subtract 5. So notice that each of the variable is raised to the first power so this is a linear equation. Okay it's very important to recognize what type of equation we have because these four steps can only be used to solve any linear equation. So the first step remove any grouping symbols using the distributive property. So distribute the four through the parentheses because it's four times the entire parentheses. So four times two x, four times one, that gives you eight x plus four is equal to 29. Notice that there's a three times a parentheses. So three times each term, you get six x, subtract 15. And now combine like terms. on same side of the equation. So 
So don't start moving terms around until you have the combined like terms finished. So notice that there's no like terms on the left side of the equation, so it stays 8x plus 4. The right side of the equation, there's a 29 and there's a subtract 15. Those are like terms. 9 minus 15, which is 14, plus 6x. Now the next step is to add or subtract like terms to the same side of the equation. So that means move all the variable terms to the same side and on the non-variable terms to the other side. So it doesn't matter which side you move the variable terms to. You can either move it to the left side of the equals or the right side. So let's move the 6x to the left side. So subtract 6x to move it to the left side of the equation because it was positive 6x. And now you'll have 8x minus 6x is 2x plus 4 is equal to 14. And now we're not finished yet. There's a constant term, 4, that needs to be grouped on the right side of the equation. So subtract 4, and you get 2x is equal to 14. Subtract 4 is 10. And then the very last step should be to divide by same quantity. on both sides of the equation. So that means isolate the variable by itself. Well, we have 2 times x divided by 2 will isolate the variable term. And so this gives you x is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so this is called a solution. And notice that we have only one solution. That means x is equal to 5 will make this original statement true. If you plug in 5 to check your answer, you'll have 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, times 4, the left side of the equation is 44, and the right side of the equation is 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 subtract 5 is 5, 3 times 5 is 15, and then 29 plus 15 is also 44. So it does check. You get 44 equals 44. Okay, let's try another problem, number 2. This time we're going to solve the equation negative 3 times x subtract 7 subtract 6 outside the parentheses is equal to 2 subtract parentheses 4 negative 4 x plus 5. And so this is also a linear equation because all the x terms are to the first power. Okay, so let's go through the same four steps we did in the last problem. First step. Distributive property to remove any grouping symbols, which we have parentheses involved. So remove them using distributive property. So you have negative 3 times x, that's negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 7, that's positive 21. Don't distribute the negative to the negative 6 because it's outside the parentheses. Equals 2, and then there's a negative 1 times the next set of parentheses. So negative times negative 4x makes it plus 4x. And don't forget about the next term. Negative 4 times 5 gives you negative 5. Now the next step. Combine like terms. On the same side of the equation. So see if there's any like terms on the left side or combine like terms on the right side. Well, there's constant terms that you can find on the left side, so negative 3x plus 15 is equal to, and notice that the 2 subtract 5 are like terms, so 4x, 2 subtract 5 is negative 3, and now the next step, add or subtract like terms to the same side of the equation. So you may not need to use this step if you already have x terms on the same side and you have constant terms on the same side. Well, this equation does not. You have a negative 3x on one side and a 4x on the other. So let's move the x terms to the right side this time. So you can add 3x to undo negative 3x on the left side, but then add 3x on the right side of the equation. That gives you 15 is equal to 
7x attract 3. And now add 3 to move it to the other side with the constant terms. So you'll have 18 is equal to 7x. And the very last step is to divide by the same quantity on both sides of the equation. So that means divide both sides by 7 to isolate the x term. And so x is equal to 18 sevenths. Do not round your answer, because if you round your answer, if you put this into a calculator and approximate it, you'll get an approximation answer. 18 sevenths is the exact answer. So if you plug in 18 sevenths and for each of the x values, the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation will be true. So now that we know how to solve a linear equation by using the four steps, you can actually use a graphing calculator to solve a linear equation as well. And there's two different methods that we're going to talk about. You can use a graphing calculator to check your answer by plugging in the x value into the original equation, or you can actually solve an equation using a graphing calculator using two different methods. And we're going to look at the first method, which is called numerical table of values. So we're going to use a graphing calculator to generate a table of values and figure out if the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation are equal. So the first step, if you want to solve a linear equation using a graphing calculator, you need to enter in the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation into the calculator. So go to y equals and make sure the left side of the equation is y1, which will be 4 times 2x plus 1 in parentheses. And now the equation on the right side will be y2, which is 29 plus 3 times 2x subtract 5. So the first step is to go to y equals or stat plot button and the second step is to enter in one side of the equation as y1 and the other side of the equation is y2. The next step is to set up your table with a starting value and how much do you want the table to increment values by. So now go to second and then table set which is table setup or the window button. Notice that the TBL start is at zero by default and the little triangle TBL is equal to 1. That means how much do you want the values to count by on, in the table. The independent variable, which is the x values, is automatically generated with the calculator, and the dependent variable is automatically generated for the y values. So the fourth step is we're going to start the value at 1 for the table. So x equals 1 will be the top table start, and we want the table increment values to be set to 1, just like we have. So now the fifth step. After the table of values have been set up correctly with the table setup screen, go to second and then graph, which is also the table button. So go to second, graph, you'll see table right above it in blue. So now notice that we started the table at x equals 1 and the values for x are counting by 1s. The y1 is the values that you would get if you plugged in x equals 1 into the left side of the equation, or x equals 2 into the left side of the equation, and so on. The y2 is the right side of the equation. What do you get when you plug in x equals 5 into the right side, x equals 6 into the right side? We're looking for what is the value of x where the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation are equal, because there should only be one solution for a linear equation, and it looks like it's x equals 5, for the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation to be both 44. And so the answer or the solution to this equation would be x equals 5. If the value does not appear on the calculator, you may need to scroll up or down until you can find out what value of x gives you the same value. And you can also scroll up to the negative values as well. So that was one method that you can use to solve a linear equation. You can use a table of values. Well, there's another way that you can solve a linear equation, or any type of equation for that matter, and it's what's called the intersection method. So this method is a little bit more convenient if your answer is just like the second equation that we solved, where your answer is at 18 divided by 7, where it's going to be an approximation answer. It's not, it's not going to be exactly a whole number. So we're going to solve a second linear equation using the intersection method on the calculator this time. And so to be able to solve the equation, first step is to go to y equals, or the stat plot button. Enter in the left side of the equation is y1, and the right side of the equation is y2, just as we had before. So this time we're going to solve this equation. 
2 times parentheses, x subtract 3, then subtract 17 outside the parentheses. Scroll down to y2, and it's 13 subtract 3 times x plus 2 in parentheses. So once the first step's been finished, the second step is to go to your window button so that we can graph using a proper viewing window. So this is actually a very important step because you want to be able to have the intersection of the two graphs be on the graphing window. So notice that the graphing window is by default negative 10 for the x min, 10 for the x max, count by ones, y min negative 10, y max 10, and count by ones for the y scale. So we want our window to be set up as follows. The x min is negative 1, scroll down, x max will be 10, x scale is okay with 1, y min will make it negative 15, the y maximum 5, and the y scale will count by 5s. So each tick mark on the y axis will be by 5s this time. So once you have finished step 3 by entering the x min, x max, x scale, y min, y max, and y scale, the fourth step is to press the graph button so that you can see what does the graph of y1 and y2 look like. So there's the graph of y1. Notice that it's a linear equation, so the graph should be a straight line, and y2 is also a straight line. So what's so interesting about these graphs is that they intersect only in one point. So two lines will intersect exactly at one point, and that's the solution. We want to find out what is the x value where the two graphs will intersect each other. Well, you can use the trace button. The trace will put a cursor on either y1, or if you hit up and down, it will give you a cursor on y2 if you hit up or down. Well, I can use the arrow buttons left or right to scroll to the right and notice I'm getting closer to the intersection point. Well, the intersection, it looks like it might be 6 comma negative 11. So x equals 6 and y equals negative 11. But what if the answer was like 6.01? Well, I can't be able to figure that out using just the trace feature. So what I can do is I can go to second calc. Now we've talked about this screen before because we had minimum and maximum. We want number five this time for intersection or intersect. Now the calculator is going to ask you some questions again. It's going to ask you, what is your first curve? What did you enter as y1? Well, it should tell you. If that's correct, then hit enter. And it is. What is your second curve? Is this y2? Is your blinking cursor on the line that's going down from left to right? Yes. Now guess. You don't have to guess, just like with maximum and minimum. So hit enter, and the intersection really is right where the cursor is. So if it's blinking, that's where the intersection point is. It's x equals 6 and y equals negative 11. The solution to the equation is x equals 6. You always want the x value to solve the equation. So that's how you can solve a linear equation using the intersection method. You enter as the left side is y1, the right side of the equation is y2, and you try to find out where do the graphs intersect. If it's a linear equation, you should have the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation intersect only at one point. And so they intersect at 6 comma negative 11. So x equals 6 is the solution. Okay, and so we're going to finish up this video by talking about how do you solve linear equations that contain fractions. So equations are much easier to solve if they don't have fractions, just like we were solving the last two equations by hand. Well, what if they have fractions? Here's how you can get rid of all the fractions. You eliminate all the fractions in the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, or the LCD, that contains any fractions in the equation. So let's do a couple examples to finish up. So example two. We're going to solve this linear equation. All right, so we have x subtract 3 divided by 4. Then it's equal to 5 divided by 14. And then subtract x plus 5 divided by 7. So one thing I like to do first is that if there are any more than one term in the numerator, enclose them in parentheses. Because it's x minus 3 is that entire numerator and x plus 5 is this entire numerator in that third fraction. That's going to be very important as we go through this example. So the first step is to get rid of all the fractions by finding the least common denominator. Or 
or sometimes people just call it LCD for short. So the LCD is the first common multiple of all the denominators. So what is the first multiple that 4, 14, and 7 will all have in common? And the first one that's in common will be 28, because 14 will not go into 4 evenly. So now, multiply all terms in the equation by the LCD. which is 28 to clear fractions. So take 28 times the first fraction, x subtract 3 in parentheses divided by 4 equals 28 times 5 divided by 14, subtract 28 times the third fraction, x plus 5 divided by 7. Now, the reason why you want to multiply by 28 is 28 goes into 4, 14, and 7 evenly. So 28 goes into 4 7 times. So now notice that the denominator is just 1, which means there is no denominator. So now the next term, you have 14 goes into 28 2 times, and then the third fraction, you have 7 goes into 28 4 times. So what happens is that you have all the denominators are 1, so that means you do not have any denominators at all. So 7 times x subtract 3 is equal to 2 times 5, subtract 4 times x plus 5. So now we're back to an equation that we were talking about earlier in this video. This is a linear equation that does not contain fractions. So to be able to solve this, we go through those four steps again. Distribute to remove any grouping symbols, and there are two different grouping symbols to eliminate. So we have 7 times x, 7x. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21, equals 2 times 5 is 10, negative 4 times x, negative 4x, and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. The next step is to make sure that we combine like terms first. So 7x subtract 21. There are no other like terms on the left side, but the right side of the equation, there's a 10 subtract 20. So that's negative 4x subtract 10. So now, move terms around, so move all the x terms to the same side and all the non-variable terms to the other side of the equation. I'm going to move the negative 4x to the left side of the equation by adding 4x. So that is 11x. I'm going to add 21 to the right side of the equation. That gives me 11. Negative 10 plus 21. And so now, once I have the variable term on one side and the constant term on the other, I'm ready to divide or multiply. So now, divide both sides by 11 and you get x equals 11 divided by 11, which is 1. And so you have one solution again. So this means x equals 1. If you plug in x equals 1 into the original equation, the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation will be equal to one another. Okay, let's try one more. Number 2, same idea. It's going to have fractions involved. So x plus 2 divided by 4. Subtract x minus 1 divided by 11 and it equals negative 2. So again, this is a linear equation because there are x's to the first power and the denominators are just constants, 4 and 11. So I'm going to make sure that the x plus 2 is in closed in parentheses because there's two terms and the x minus 1 is in closed in parentheses as well. And the first step is to find the least common denominator. Alright, so considering all the fractions, considering all the denominators, what is the first multiple that 4 and 11 will have in common? Notice that the third fraction you can always just put over 1 to make it a fraction. So the first multiple of 4 and 11 is 44. So that's going to be the least common denominator this time. So now multiply all terms in the equation. by the LCD, which is 44, to clear fractions. So let's go back to the equation we had. We have 44 times the first fraction, x plus 2 divided by 4. Subtract 44 times the second fraction, x minus 1 divided by 11. 
and make sure you multiply the other term, the negative 2, by 44 as well. You have to make sure you multiply all the terms by 44. So 44 times negative 2. So what should happen is all the denominators should become 1 after you simplify. 4 goes into 44 11 times. So you have 11 times x plus 2. And 11 goes into 44 4 times. So it's subtract 4 times x minus 1. And then 44 times negative 2 is negative 88. So now we're back to a linear equation where you have x's to the first power, but there are no fractions involved. So distribute to remove any grouping symbols. So you have 11 times x, 11 times 2 is 22. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 equals negative 88. Combine like terms on the same side of the equation. So notice that there's 11x and there's a minus 4x already on the same side. So combine those, it gives you 7x. 22 plus 4 are already on the same side. So that gives you 26 equals negative 88. And now move the terms that are not variables to the other side of the equation, away from the x terms. So subtract 26 gives you 70, gives you 7x is equal to negative 114. And then the very last step should either be multiply or divide to isolate the x term. To isolate the x, we have 7 times x, so divide by 7. So x is equal to negative 114 divided by 7. And this does not reduce any. If, it does, if your answer does reduce, make sure it goes to lowest terms. But you still have one solution. So keep your answer as a fraction. So this gives you an idea of how to solve linear equations that involve fractions. You want to find the least common denominator so that you can multiply each term in the equation by the LCD. That way you come up with a linear equation and then you can just use the four steps that we used earlier in the video. So this is a good place to stop. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section involving solving linear equations, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we solve rational equations.